I don't think I'm over bluffing if I bluff those combos. Anyway, cheap bluff. We can cheap bluff. That's the that's the important thing. Ben's got a pot here. Ben bet half pot in the river. Nice. They're going at it blind versus blind, Ben and this guy. What an epic run in the WCP main event. And in this video, we're not gonna we're not only gonna show the highlights, but I will also share my thoughts on some of the key hands that I have played. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the action. Ben is playing a hand as he's limping along from the button. And the first hand, uh, we see a limp from low jack, which can be all sorts of hands, suited connectors, suited aces, traps, of course. I have pocket pairs here. I think a low pocket pair just wants to limp behind. Um, I think I would be raise, raising nines and better, I think, if with nines or tens against 20 big blinds from the low jack. I mean, we have to consider we play for a lot of money. We have 40 players left or 37 players left. And I do believe that players are not going to make GTO jams here with ace five suited. So if we race with nines and we face jam, we can probably also lay it down or tens exploitatively. But of course, it's very player dependent, right? If I play against a good opponent on my level, I probably go with nines and tens here. Uh, sevens, eights, we, I would probably more just aim for protection to race and knock out the blinds and then bring it heads up. Uh, and we don't need to race big, I think his range either has a clear fold or a clear call, right? If he limps like queen eight suited, you don't even, if, if you raise three X, you can't really continue. Um, we, we're not gonna be raising four X, uh, but if he has queen jack suited, he has a clear call. I wouldn't make it four X. I think it's just way too expensive and way too big. Uh, first of all, we're gonna have a lot of hands where we want him to call, uh, right? If aces and kings or queens, but then on the other side, we also want to make it cheap for our bluffs. So I think 3x is totally sufficient here. Uh, and this spot, I had pocket fives. I think, I think I've caused a controversy. Oh, there we go. Interesting. As Matthäus is seabedding. End of ben the call. call Interesting. Chip it away, boys. Yeah. Ben does have a lot of kings in his flatting range, of course. I think once we face a flop bet here, four way, uh, with him betting one third, it's a little bit less than one third. Like for me, if he would have bet one third, I would have folded. He bets around 30, 28% pot. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue if someone says, Ben, we should fold here with two players behind. I thought that he can still have hands like an ace 10 or ace jack off with a diamond um queen jack jack tens uh, maybe jack 10 and clubs nine eight and clubs queen jack and clubs all these sort of hands um of course he can have some king x he could have you know he can even have some seven x that we beat um so yeah i decided to call because i think that we might even get a f by calling a seven behind us to fold so if tyler kruger has a seven six suited well someone bets and we call i think uh, in that stage of a tournament, people can probably fold a seven. Was a limp spot though. May as oh, well okay. have hands like seven six suited, seven five suited, that kind of stuff. Let's go check check. Do you see the slowdown? Uh, diamond, diamond on, on the river. river. That is uh, that's going to be an interesting play. There is once again with the check goes check check jacks yeah. and fives. fives. Okay, all right. I think I think well played by both. However, it goes check check on the turn and reverse the ten and diamonds, and he checks again. And I think, I mean, we can. I don't really have offsuited hands. I'm not limping behind ace five off with the ace and diamonds. So I think I did a mistake here by not bluffing. If we're pocket fives with one diamond, where we block some of his ace five and diamonds uh, that he might have, so I think it's good to actually bluff the river here with like two third pot is enough. 
uh, if he has, he can have an a7, a7-8, an 8-9 that he turned on the turn. He can have like queen-10 and clubs, jack-10 and clubs that he didn't elect to bluff. So I think there are a bunch of hands that we get him to fold. And it's, again, it's really hard to have bluffs here, right? It's like literally pocket fives and pocket fours, pocket threes, pocket deuces, one diamond. But on the flip side, we have all the flush draws. We can check back some, some king eggs on the turn. Um, and then, yeah, we, we also have a bunch of flushes and we're only bluffing the pairs with one diamond. So these are only three combos each. So I think some of the pairs we want to be bluffing, maybe we can even bluff all of them. So I think it's a, it's a bit of a mistake here to check back. I thought I have enough showdown value against this ace highs and like queen jacks that didn't want to bluff. So yeah, it's, it's not a terrible mistake, but I think it's, it's a little bit better in the long run to, to bluff here. Michael Dusko, Aline. Not the snap call from Joshua. What will he have here? He is tanking, so... I would assume like a hand like tens or jacks. Like if you're thinking yeah. for so long, like I feel like queens and better is probably would've called by now, ace king would've called by now. Ace queen's yeah. probably not thinking about it for 50 bigs. So I would say, I, I put him on jacks, guys. What do you guys think here? Yeah, I think tens, jacks make sense. I think nines, you pretty much you're not gonna win. Does call. Let's go. Ace oh, king. Baby. Ace king, interesting. I was off. <laughs> You we know both were off there, yeah. I guess with the money that's on the line right now, you're going to make different decisions. And I've not been in this position before. Do we do have a chop pot? Indeed, just a chop pot. Oh, ben shows a 10. <laughs> I would have won. <laughs> <laughs> I love those emotes on GG. Like, it has to be one of the most I fun clients. To, yeah, GG has definitely done a great job in uh, bringing in a little bit more of a fun atmosphere. Exactly. So we'll, we'll come back here. So I, Ted Clubber Lang says, I look like the kind of guy who plays the daily morning tournaments in live casinos. Yeah, that's pretty much me. Ben uh, with the open here from under the gun. Yeah, with the Ace King, like, you know, you of course, you are two spots away from a pay jump, 16K pay jump. The next hand here, Ace Nine suited. I open race from under the gun. Um, we get three callers i think i definitely want to be start start betting here on the flop um sizing i think is is okay i don't really want to i just want to bet for protection it's not a hand that now wants to uh pile a lot of money joshua can have sets can have um tens jacks queens with that stack depth people are a bit a bit more scared and then of course all sorts of flush shows are gonna might get there on turn and rivers so yeah, if we have queens, we can bet big. We're gonna have some some uh, on some runouts, three streets of value, aces, kings, sets ourselves. But like a nine, just betting for protection. Of course, against big blind, we're gonna get it in. So that's not really, not really uh, a big problem here. Yeah, it's easy from here. Yeah. If Freak wants to continue here, he's basically all in, right? One point nine Freak, million of in the middle is, uh, is Jeff Bezos. <laughs> see from his uh, avatar so jeff bezos doesn't give a shit about a 5k buy there we go ben cb taking down the pot we got ben cb with the open here in the hijack flat on the button from our cypriot friend michael kane uh no uh we opened king 10 off from the hijack in the next hand um i think check is standard we could elect to run a big bluff if, if Michael Kane uh, bets. We block. I think a king is pretty good. Bluffing with a nine would be even better if you have nine eight suited to uh, where we block ace nine and king nine. But I think a king is also fine to, uh, yeah, where we block king nine. Um, and then we maximize our pressure against his weak aces. Then it's playing a pot here. Ace king nine. Olongson, uh Ben is still on his first. He only he only entered it once. Interesting turn here, by the way, Ras. It's getting more Broadway heavy. Ben does ben decide to bet here on the turn. Definitely not scared so far. But it checks around, and now on the turn, uh, we definitely want to 
size up a little bit. I think everything between half pot and pot is fine. Uh, surely there's some queen jacks, but I think some queen jacks will bet on the flop already in Michael Kane's shoes. Joshua might start leading some queen jacks on the turn. So we're going to have the best hand here, and um, we, we definitely have two streets of value unless the turn is a queen or jack. Um, we, we are ahead against some 10-9s, some of course, as well. Yeah, so uh, we definitely want to start betting here. Button folds, and now it's up to Joshua. Definitely has uh, the suited broadways in the uh, small blind flatting range. But he does fold. And takes it down, 1.6 million. So that was a good start. So we do see an all in here. What is Joshua going to do? Is he going to say, Come on, boys, let's gamble. Obviously got a hand he wanted to flat with there. Uh, no, he's definitely rolling his tank down. Yes, all in. What's happening here? Tens versus nines. Oh, versus nines. Nine on oh, the flop. Nine on the flop. Joshua only has two outs. Is he going to get it? No. That is not a 10. Stars nuts. Not only the nuts on stars, as you can see. That is indeed so sick. Spence B gets to play another post flop spot. This time against Jesua, who, uh, you know, started with a pretty nice stack. But of course, after losing that 10s uh, versus 9 cent, he is now short only 3.3 million. Queen 10 deuce. I assume it's going to be a flop where Ben's going to be stepping a lot. And indeed, he does. Uh, next hand here, I think I had a king high. I think I had a king 5 suited here or king 6 suited that I start betting on the flop. I think it's a it's a board where we want to see better range. We interact very well, especially our weakest king highs. Now it's up to Joshua. Who are we railing? We are railing Ben Sabi, the head coach of Ratio Ads, the founder. He's sitting here. He's actually betting. It's Benjamin Roll as he gets called by Joshua. Queen on the turn. Goes check, check, jack on the river. Some straight draws completing. Or pairing up, you know, Ace King getting there, King Nine getting there. We do see the checks, and do we see Ben here? <laughs> Definitely thinking there. He does. He does make the bet. I mean, pretty chunky as well. Um, turn goes check, check on on the river. I think we definitely have a mandatory bluff with our king highs. We're not going to really have any weaker hands, so especially our weakest hands. King nine gets there with a straight. We can even value bet. I mean, the sizing is a bit more polarizing, so I'm basically saying I have jacks, which I can easily check by if I have ace kings, I have king nines, um, some slow. I can definitely also, uh, I would have, I would check back some queen x on the turn, like queen nine, queen eight, um, because. Now it's more likely that he has a 10 and we're only probably going to have two streets of value against him. Uh, he's not going to call down three streets with a 10, I don't think so. Uh, but also by checking back a queen, we allow him to bluff with his jack nines, jack eights, king jack, king nines, which would fold on the turn. So we would get an additional bet from those hands. So, yeah. And if you have a queen, if I have a straight, if I have a boat, I definitely want to choose a big sizing and... Yeah, if I bet too small, he might hero me with a 10. So, yeah, that's why I sized up with my... Yeah, I think I had king 5, king 6, or king 7, one of these hands. It's not snap calling, so we can take the queens out, obviously. Uh, we can take ace king out. Joshua potentially with a with a mid middling 10. Does go all in. Could be wrong. I think you are. <laughs> I am clearly wrong. <laughs> Unless he's bluffing, we'll never know. And unfortunately, he jams, and I had to fold, of course. So yeah, he can easily have a straight. He can have a queen jack. Uh, he can have all sorts of slow plays here. So yeah, a little bit of a hit there, but this happens. We've got an all-in on the other table. We're gonna switch to that one as we see Mariano opening it up. Say why all-in and Dines calls jacks versus kings. Dines with the kings. That's a check on the flop. He has to find a king and a king only. Dines. Will he find it? That is a diamond. That's not it. 
Joe Angle one. And playing a pot here against a big blind. The next hand I open ace queen from under the gun. I think it's okay to also bet range here, uh, especially at this stage of the tournament where people are not going to be that aggressive. I opted to check back, which is fine as well. I th the EVs are very identical. It makes these are not the spots where I would pay. Um, I, I would study that much because if you look at the EV of checking back and betting ace queen, it's very identical. Um, I think on the turn we have to call once. There's just simply too many draws possible, and I was not blocking any clubs. I didn't know the exact suits. If I have ace queen with the queen and clubs, it's probably okay to fold. But also his sizing is not good. I would say. I mean, I still check back some weaker king x. I have eights, nines, some tens in my range, some queens in my range. Uh, I have some seven x in my range. I have some six x in my range. Um, so, and I think also with my ace size, ace queen, ace jack, I would sometimes also pay a little bigger bet because it's so easy to bluff all your four fives, all your eight nines, all your ten nines, all your eight fives, um, all your flush draws. It's super easy to overbluff this spot. There's Twitch chat. Say hi to YouTube, guys. And on the river. Um, Again, he bets rather small, and I think we have a clear call with the ace queen here. Uh, since we don't block any draws, I would fold my eights, I would fold my nines, I would fold my. Um, yeah, if I have something like seven eight, seven nine suited, I would fold all these hands. Um, and I ace queen, I think, is just a hand that we need to call. We block some queen seven, some queen six, some king queens. We block a lot of his value, but we don't block any uh, bluffs, I think. Uh, this is also a spot that is definitely gonna get bluffed. I mean, our range really might, really looks like eights to jacks, right? So, or a seven x, and the queen is another scare card. So, um, I think naturally people can take this hand as a as a bluff. Say hi to YouTube. Have the ratio scores German subtitles, or is there a German version? We are working right now super hard on adding German subtitles. The first videos already contain German subtitles. If you go to ratioads.com/courses. As ace queen is not good here versus the set of sevens. Benjamin makes the wrong call, unfortunately, down to 6.4 million, getting shorter. Uh, but yes, we are working hard on adding subtitles. And if you go to ratios.com slash courses, you can check the progress. Right now, Italian and Spanish is as good as finished. Can you guys hear me? Yep, I can hear you. I don't have your video here, Stevie, either. I know, I had to turn it off. Okay. Uh, that was an interesting hand here. Button opens. Uh, we have the Jack-5 suited. I, this is not a hand that I want to get in on the flop because we're gonna. if we get it in, we either run into a draw and all his draws are going to have at least one overcard, but very often also a gutshot like King, Queen, Ace, Queen, Ace, King, Jack, X, and Diamonds. Uh, or something like queen nine, queen eight. So uh, we even almost flipping against those hands. And then if we has a mate hand, we're always going to be beat. I don't think he's going to get it in with a 10. So my strongest jack I would go broke with should be at least queen jack. And everything else I'm just calling. Yeah, okay. What well, range maps are on the pad course? Um, okay. They are uh, open race ranges for hey, most tech there? sizes. Hey, oh, what's up, Jerry? Yeah. What's up, guys? How's okay. it going? Good, buddy. Welcome to this uh, stream. Or Steve, Steve, are we live or we're going live now? You guys are live right now, working on. Oh, games. we're live. Hey, what's up, chat? <laughs> yeah, I saw. I saw you guys were. Uh, I saw you guys been watching the the show on Twitch right now. Very happy to. Uh, ben asked me to kind of come on here a couple of days. So, listen, if Ben has a chance to make a World Series poker final table to make three point some million dollars, you know, you got to come watch and check it out. So. <laughs> exactly. Well, we're happy to have you. I know the uh, I know the chat's been asking all day. When's Joey coming? Uh, it goes check check on the turn. We river two pair. I think any jack now is a clear big value bet, and I went for yeah almost pot size because I know I'm gonna have a lot of eight nines, queen nines, and this is a spot where I would get hero called very very wide. It's kind of a tense tense moment right here. He calls. Jack five two pairs good. Oh, oh my wow. god! What a, what a call. Let's go. <laughs>
We got the Chicago Joey wow. Goodman. Wow. Well, I mean, what the hell was that? What's going on there? That guy calls bottom pair. I mean, he's putting him wow. on the flush draw, miss flush draw, miss straight draw, but wow. And he opts to call with ace deuce, which I think is actually a good call because if we look at the way he's the hands he's coming to the river with, he's blocking some jack deuces, 10 deuces that you might have slow played. Um, and he's not blocking any bluffs. Um, he's not blocking 8-9, 9-8, queen 9. So I think ace deuce, for example, is a good call. Uh, better than ace queen or um, yeah, better than ace king or better than ace 9. And he's going to keep betting a lot of his jack eggs, a lot of queen eggs, uh, pocket queens on this very dry board. So especially, especially with that uh, stack depth where, um, yeah, he's not going to, yeah, he's not going to um, be able to put us all in. Sorry, uh, where he's not able to put us all in on the river if he checks back the turn. I think it's it's a good call. I will certainly have my bluffs with eight nine. Probably queen eight. Yeah, for sure, eight nine. My weakest flush draws if I have something like seven three in diamonds. Um, I, I really want to attack his ace highs, king highs, queen highs there. Probably queen eight. Um, he will bet king queens, queen nines, right? So I wouldn't be bluffing with king queen. We have some short on value against his uh, queen nines. So uh, I wouldn't block my nut flush draws, uh, bluff my nut flush draws. So you really want to be bluffing your weakest draws here where you get some money from his auto folds. And then, of course, he can also have eights, sevens, which are really bad bluff catchers, which also might fold. But his range is very, it's going to be very heavily defined around ace highs or, or like very weak pairs. And yeah, so I think it's a, it's a good call here. Looks like Ben's got a Ben 3-bet here against Julian. Um, I 3-bet ace for off here from the small blind where Julian opens the button. Uh, again, with this deck size, it's actually quite a good 3-bet. I think also with my hand, it looks a bit trashy, looks a bit spewy, but I think it's actually not, since we are not... I, I would prefer Ace-4 off over, let's say, Ace-8 off all day long, because we unblock a lot of his, like, King-9s, King-8s, 10-8 um, suiteds that have a hard time calling a 3-bet, and we still block a lot of his value, of course. Um, so yeah, I think, um, I, and if called with ace four off, I think we, um, yeah, with a wheel. If we are deeper, then I would try to have more equity. So I would, I would probably then with a deeper stack size, never three bit off suited aces anyway, unless like ace jack or ace queen off, maybe ace ten. But if it's weaker aces, I'm always trying to be suited. So um, then this low suited aces three betting smart small members button is totally fine anyway. But if it comes to stack depth around 30 big blinds, 25, 35 big blinds, you really want to unblock his folds and still have, um, have good equity. And we can still have, hit an ace. He's going to call a lot of Broadway. So overall, our equity is still um, quite all right against his range. Yep. He's been very aggressive out of the small blinds. So that Ben sticking to his game plan right now. So many people we got. We got 29 players left. Next pay jumps at... 26 next payout is going to be what 79,000 and uh, for the next money jump so how much do you think that factors in joey when you've got four million up top versus the pay jumps of say thirty thousand dollars i mean you got to imagine a lot of these people are playing to make it to that final table the value and potentially not only final tabling the main event but also the four million dollars means that uh, i think a lot of players maybe not a lot of players but i think it would impact a bunch of players in terms of getting really nervous or getting kind of scared and maybe playing a little bit tighter than normal. So if you're a more aggressive player like Ben, that might be a really good spot for you to put a lot of pressure on a players who just don't want to embrace the variance and, and maybe rightfully so. I would think so. I mean, 30,000 would be a, a good chunk of change for a lot of players, but I think the glory that's involved in just taking in, we've seen, Ooh, ben seen all in. Uh oh. Coming in. Um, opening here, the ace nine off. He rejams. We have an easy call with ace nine off. He's probably going to be reshaving ace to suit it, even ace five off. So my calling range would probably be like. It's also going to be shoving a lot of broadways. So I wouldn't, since we risk half our stack. Sorry, we're not risking half our stack. We're risking. We had. How much did we have? 12, 12 million. Yeah, we risk around one quarter of our stack, which is important to me in, at this stage of the tournament. So I would skip some marginal calls, but I would certainly call um, King 10 suited, King Jack off. 
I would call probably 12 big blinds, threes or fours and better. I would be calling a seven off. Yeah, ace four suited, ace three suited. So yeah, I would be calling uh, really white, but I wouldn't be calling any ace. I wouldn't be calling like any pocket. I would probably maybe fold deuces. See if Ben can stack, stock, stack Joshua here. Come on. <laughs> he loves using those emotes. <laughs> Joshua is a big fan of the emotes. He has been, uh... here we, we go. He's Got nine, first ace nine. eight. Oh, eight. Oh, wow. Got them pipped. It's a great flop for Ben. Here we go. Not a man. Eh? <laughs> Ah, 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 ah. It's a queen. Hey. Nice. Wow. Let's go. <laughs> GG to Joshua. Gotta give him props. He kept the table fun with some good uh, emojis and such. And uh, but always awesome to see our main man Benjamin Rolly. Let's go. Let's go. Is Ben chip lead right now? Is Ben the chip leader in the uh, World Series Poker Online main check. event? He is in, uh, in third. In third. In third. And now Brian's gonna be all in the next hand. And gets called. Ben calls. A seventh is ace queen. Oh, ace queen for Ben. Now we were up to 26 million. I think I also won a big pot where I rejammed ace eight off against queens on the button for around 20 big blinds, which was also rather standard. Um, luckily we got there with an ace and then I won just a couple of small pots. And then we had this hand where I called his um, Brian Pico. Pico Piccioli, Piccioli, sorry for not pronouncing it correctly, Italian. Uh, it sounds very Italian, to be honest. I don't know where he's from. Apologize when I'm not, when I have no clue where this player is from. Anyway, I opted to call, of course, here with Ace Queen off. He's open jamming around, how much is it? 15 bigs. Yeah, so my calling range would be like, Ace eight off, ace six suited. He's gonna be shoving a, pretty much any ace, a lot of broad ways, something like maybe 10 nine suited. This stage of the tournament, I'm not sure if people would be shoving all the 10 nine suited, maybe be, being a little bit more hesitant. I haven't had so many reads on him. I think he just joined the table. He was chip lead at, at some point. I think he lost a couple of big pots. Then he was short and then he, won, he open jammed this hand here. So I haven't had any reads but this would be roughly my calling range and maybe against some players calling a bit tighter, calling a bit looser. Uh, it's not uncarved, not carved in stone for sure. Queen on the flop. Oh, oh that's that it. does end it for Pico. That's wow. it. So Joey, but we have to root for Benny. <laughs> Vamos. <laughs> GG's. Wow. I mean, I if you had to lose to someone, better lose to Ben, right? Exactly, but what a heart, what a heartbreaking run there for Brian Piccoli. He essentially he was went from... he was chip leading for for such a long time today. We were we were saying right. like he's just cruising. They all seem uh, like more random guys, I would say. And looking now at the V pips, it's like eight, fourteen, eighteen, sixteen. So it's like it seems like they're not really getting in the mixer too much. Uh, so it's probably a good spot for Ben, I guess. Then I went. I lost a few small pots, went back to 25 million. Uh, not a big, not a big deal. And then we had a very interesting hand. That was a bit of a bit controversial. So uh, I, I limped the king, king jack off. The board comes ace queen three. I remember one big pot. I also lost post love against Tyler with ace king on a queen queen high board. I caught flop bet once and then I had to fold the turn. So I had a couple of big pots with good hands where I had to give up. That was a bit unfortunate. And then, yeah, this hand happens and we have King Jack here. So first of all, yes, we have enough short on value. I think just checking is fine. And yeah, maybe he was stabbing something like a 10 high or Jack high with a backdoor flush. I think something like Jack five and diamonds. I, I wouldn't mind betting because I thought that if he has an ace, he's very likely to continue betting on the turn. His bet on the flop doesn't necessarily strive me as very queen X heavy. It's like, I'm still checking some aces. I wouldn't bet all of my aces, especially I have strong queen X, like king, queen, queen, jack, queen, 10, queen, nine. 
So, and his strongest queen eggs are very likely raising preflop, like king, queen, queen, jack, queen, ten. So he has very often like queen, four, queen, five type of hands. And I don't, th I don't see them betting. Uh, I was actually, if he bets a hand that is a pair, I think it's better to bet a three because you protect. So if you have like four, three suited with a queen, you don't need to protect. What do you need to protect against? So 4-3 suited, 5-3 suited, even an 8-3 suited, I think is a much better bet against all our like, um, yeah, jack 9s and, and, and jack 7s that don't connect with the board are just purely check folds um, or something like 7-5 off. So you do some protection with a 3, you get some value from king jack, king 10, even jack 10 as, as we have it here um, with our king jack. Yeah, so what, what do you think about uh, Ben being out of position against Tyler? You can see Tyler's have played a lot of hands as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who Tyler is. Um, I, don't know, I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea who he is. I'm going to Google now. It's maybe maybe Star's name comes up or something. Um, no, I don't know who he is. Do you guys know him? Or? No, no, we don't. I don't, I don't know much about him at all. I just, uh, just see the Mexican flag, and I'm assuming he's not from Mexico. Uh, I guess not with the... Unless an American poker player impregnated a Mexican girl 18 years ago during W Coop and named it after his dad, Tyler, or something. Uh, that would be the only way that I could uh, see that happening. Tyler Ruga has 40,000 lifetime. Oh, yeah, this Tyler guy looks like he only plays like less than $100 buy ins or less than $200 buy ins. So seems like he's a, um, an amateur, I guess. Okay. Yeah, he has basically, yeah, he played the main event one time in Vegas, 2018 cash. And outside of that, his biggest tournament score is for $4,000 in 2016. So, yeah, if that's the same player, then uh, he is from Hartford, New York, and yeah. doesn't appear to play a ton. But now he is about the chip lead here with, uh, with how many players left, 16 players left. So he's in a pretty big position here to win some money. Yeah, it seems so. It seems so. Oh, here we go. Ben gets raised on the river by Tyler. And queen, I think it's good to check back and let him bluff. Um, so now, if we look at our range, because sometimes why would he fold a three? Well, he should be folding a three. I mean, if we look at our range, we have all the queen eggs. Like we're gonna check call more queen eggs than he's supposed to bet. And for that reason, also some jack tens I'm betting myself. If I have jack 10 attacking his king highs, applying pressure against 3x, going for multiple barrels. So the king jack and king 10 is probably one of the worst hands I can have here. And I definitely want to start betting with my queen x. I don't, if he has an ace or if he opts to hero call with a three, I want to get maximum value. Like there's not so much he can bluff with. There's not so many obvious draws. So I, I heard people saying, yeah, but what are you representing? Like I can represent a bunch here, <laughs> right? And still I'm gonna have weak aces, ace deuce, ace four, ace five. I think I'm going to be good a lot of the time. What's happening? So what's the big blind? Big blind. Big blind's two hundred fifty and five hundred thousand right now. Um, unfortunately, at this point in time, he had a queen, so I was was a bit unlucky. I actually thought I'm going to have a lot of Ford equity here. It's actually a decent decent run out for me. Um, yeah, but. Of course, he raised for value with his queen, and we just had to give it up. I was just wondering what the action was there for Ben to bet the river, because it was a, it felt like the kind of board where you wouldn't bet an ace very often. You'd just bet like a queen or a bluff. Mm -hmm. So Ben tanking, you'd assume he doesn't have a bluff. So um, and you assume he wouldn't fold the queen. So uh, it's kind of a yeah. When someone tanks there, they're usually either going to go over the top or they're going to call because they don't bet an ace in the first place, kind of thing. Um, but you know. Your opinion being put all in here, by the way, on the river by Craig Timmis. Yep. I think Craig Timmis is a PLO player and it's a paired board, so he could be bluffing like 9 10, Jack 9. Joey will probably find more bluffs than me because he's uh... a. <laughs> I mean, listen, there's a unique spot here as well, too, right? I don't know how much. Uh, but that's interesting information to know if the guy's a PLO player. He might be overvaluing some certain hands here as, as in terms of what they could be bluffs. And, I mean, maybe he's correct in terms of putting those as bluffs that other players might not. Yeah, interesting sizing by European, like going 1-6 pot. Quite rare to see. 
Have you seen the time bank though? 500 seconds. I know, it's crazy, bro, isn't it? And he's like, bro, I have fucking 10 minutes if I need to need it. You know, it's like, uh, he's loving live. <laughs> well, maybe he's going to use it all here, Pads, because he's got 480 seconds left to go after his uh, one six pot bet here on the river. Yeah, I mean, Sam would never do it, but it could be the most epic slow roll of all time, a 10 minute slow roll, something we've never seen before in poker. Sam would obviously never do such a thing. We got my man Stevie. Stevie's got two cameras on him right now. All One fixed. from each angle right now. <laughs> <laughs> Such a pro. Good, buddy. I mean, hey, I just thought you were trying to give him both sides of your face kind of going on there. Exactly, man. But yeah, Matt Staples in the chat. What's up to Matt? He's been grinding hard, working hard out there on the Twitch street. He says, oh, block bet nightmare. Oh, oh, my God. oh wow. I, I thought he was bluffing. Not the Fariza, though. Wow, what a call. Holy shit. That was a sick hand here between Sam Foston and... Um, Craig Timmis. I can't really recall the action. I think it would went open race preflop. Craig Timmis three bets. It goes check check on the flop. Sam Foss needs this turn small, and also block bets the river with that sizing. And Craig Timmis decides to go all in. And Sam Foss hero calls him with pocket tens, and Craig Timmis had. Pocket threes, which I think is not a good preflop three bet, especially not against someone as, as Sam, who is going to have a strong under the gun range. You want to be bluff three betting strong hands, and it just brings you in a lot of trouble. I think this is where the river jam might be okay, but it's just, you see, it's just so random what's, what's happening here. I think this is where I would rather follow um, a solid game plan, having my ace five, having my king jack. It's so much easier to play. Low pocket pairs here in position. It's just my personal opinion here. Uh, I wouldn't play a hand like this, especially as get probably against the toughest opponent on 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 this table and probably in the entire field left. Uh, he's for sure top three, you know, if not even the best player left here. So you don't want to get out of line against these players. If you want to make a bluff, then at least choose your hands wisely. I mean, on the river... Um, I can see his reasoning. He just thinks that Sam is weak. But also Sam is going to look you up if he thinks that you're not rapping a lot. He doesn't care, right? And he's also can easily have um, a set or straight here because he knows your range is weak and he wants you to jam your king, queen, ace, queen. So he's going to be not necessarily super balanced, but I think it's, it's I don't think, he is someone that gets exploited here. Nice. What a time. god. Wow. Let me see if there's any... I just need to... Man, you guys are making me work for this. Wow. I mean, that is a... Wow. Sick call. And a sick bluff. My friends are all screaming. <laughs> Not anything, but I came third in the PLO W Coop yesterday. I feel, um, honestly, Pads, I feel like there's a thousand tournaments now, so none of those things mean mean much to me. In exactly. Some way. I mean, I just don't play the PLO tournaments. It was the first one I guess I've played since Scoop. I'm a, like in the PLO daily and weekly tournaments. They're very reggy now of like PLO regs, like Andreas Torbenson or whatever he's called. Yeah, like, way, yeah. They're way better than me. I'm I'm big fish. Like I'm I'm not good at all. So like if we're rating my PLO tournament ability, I'd give it a one. <laughs> I'm definitely a one out of the you, you played plenty of mid stakes cash and you play tournaments. Like I'm, I'm sure you're not a one. <laughs> well, I feel like it against these guys. Uh, you know, you yeah. can feel like you're very outmatched. The guys who are just playing full time, yeah, like Scarevoy and Rack and Tour and stuff like that. Yeah, Rack and Tour. He, I think he's the best actually. I mean, just uh, no, I'm not qualified to say, but like he, he, what the hell? I feel like he is. Somebody just folded queens to me. Uh, face up. Um, unbelievable. Um, yeah, he, um, <laughs> <laughs> completely caught off guard there. Like, what the heck? <laughs> uh, once again, I think then we were down to 20 million. Um, as you can see, it can go up and down. Uh, we think we won a small pot. And then this hand, we limp from the small blind. Uh, we bet the flop. I bet the churn. I have 10, nine in spades here. And now on the river, I have a decision to make. I think... My 10-9 definitely wants to bluff because he caught the flop. He can have um, 
like he's supposed to call any middling cards between the king and the eight. So it's like queen jack, jack 10, jack 9 and hearts in case he didn't raise it pre. Even something like queen 5 and hearts. It just has too much equity against my bluffs. So like any queen high with a backdoor flush draw has to call. Any ace high with a backdoor flush draw has to call. Any 8x with a backdoor flush draw. I mean any 8x has to call anyway. And then he can have some floats like 7, 9 and hearts, um, 10, 9 and hearts. Um, probably something like 10, 7 and hearts for sure. Everything around the 8 with a backdoor flush and overcard has to call. So he has a bunch of those hands and th this was my goal to target those hands. Um, I think also if he has something like ace 5 and eight five and eight four and hearts, uh, he would fold. I would be bluffing my four fives, my ten nines, my seven nines, and my seven fives. And I would value bet any king. Um, I wouldn't be bluffing flush draws. So if I have ten nine and hearts, seven five and hearts, I would fold. Um, seven five I actually don't have because I think it's too weak to bet the flop. Even four five, four five is questionable. But I think four five is. Yeah, four five is better than seven five, because you can only turn a gut shot. Four five, you can at least turn and open a straight draw. So I think, yeah, I'm gonna have four five, seven nine, and some of the ten nine combos. Jack ten, also sometimes raising pre. I also think it's fine to just check call, uh, or check check and take it from there. Has enough equity. Queen jack, I'm not bluffing. So yeah. Um, and we can value bet down to king deuce. Of course, some of my king eggs I'm also going to check. Uh, my weakest king eggs. I'm not sure if I'm over bluffing here, but... Yeah, it's it's close. I don't think I'm over bluffing if I bluff those combos. Anyway, cheap bluff. We can cheap bluff. That's the that's the important thing. Ben's got a pot here. Ben bet half pot in the river. Nice. They go not at blind versus blind, Ben and this guy. Yeah, last time. Time, last time we saw a big hand, Tyler raised the river on a board pairing card. Tyler oh. called. No. Oh, uh, yeah. What? Oh, my. Wow. Wow. What the hell? He looks me up with the ace, eight, five, and hearts. Um, a bit of a a bit of a bummer, of course. Eight, five. It's hard to see. Aye, aye, aye. Still really amazing stock, like. I'm and then here we've there. got uh, Stefan thinking. I mean, he must have a hand then. There's no need to tank, right? Oh. So what do you think is going to be like the weakest <laughs> hand Stefan should be calling it? Probably pocket 10s and ace-king. I'd fold pocket 9s. Earlier at the start of, of the day, we had a super big spot. I, I forgot between who it was, but... Somebody 3-bet ace-king suited and then got jammed on, cut a first button for 50 big blinds. He was thinking of ace-king suited with such a sick spot. Mm -hmm. I, I, I the ICM. Really tank him in pocket tens here? You think, what, what is he, what is he, what is he going to do this with? Pocket, probably pocket nines or ace-queen, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, ace-queen, yeah. that big of a tank here? Yeah, because with ace-queen, like you dominate Matthias. But like against Julian, you're not going to be in great shape, right? And obviously, I'll, I see it. Like Stefan has an amazing stack still. Twenty big blinds is still a lot, you know. So like, yep. But if he wins his pot, he is. Just make oh, the call. call. Jacks, Jack. king, queen, and ace, king. Oh, Looking good so far. Players. Wow, oh, what a turn! Wow. You'd love to see that. Wow. Definitely love to see that. I often go check, check here. Mm. Like, Tyler is going to have a lot of, you know, jack 10 and 9 slow play. Like, he doesn't usually have, like, ace jack here. He's just going to fold, like, ace jack on the flop, usually. Do you see a bet, though, from Steven? Strong. Strong. Let's see what Tyler does here. 3.7 million chip pet. 11.5 again. call. Wow. Back to flush yeah, completes. Goes quads. check, check quickly. Wow, God, quads man. indeed. <laughs> wow, he checks back queens. Wow, what a, what a hand. check. Good check. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because Tyler doesn't have like queen eight or king eight, you know, so it's hard for him to have a. Right, yeah. A worse it's maybe the biggest 
weakness of players letting their ego get to them that someone's outplaying them you know it's like right. i've had it my whole career like they free bet you twice the third time it's you need a lot of restraint to not you know fuck this guy and let's let's go kind of thing yeah in plo it must be even more crazy because it's so, so <laughs> oh we've seen all in here from ben rejamming over wendling gauss open she's tight as well 12 percent v yeah so. under the gun under the gun tight player 12 percent Fuck. Oh fuck no. Up. Oh my god, no. But maybe Tyler punts it off. Ace, ace Jack for aces. Oh. Uh, and then I regem my ace trick suited, running into aces. Uh, the hands I would be regemming with here would be like Um She wasn't she was actually quite tight, so against her I would be a little bit tighter. Probably with like sevens plus, ace ten suited, ace jack off, king jack suited, king queen off. As a default against other players, I would also regem an ace five suited is really really good. Pocket fives and better. King ten suited, queen jack suited, uh, serve really well as reshuffs. It's not a good hand to be up against here. Gonna need some runner runners. Ten hearts. It's unbelievable. Oh, that's so <laughs> tilting. Uh, um, we didn't get there. And yeah, you know when someone is so aggressive, then also wakes up with it. Unfortunately, sometimes it can backfire. And I'll happily take I'll happily take Wenling right now. So you can see Wenling's doing also min raising, and then she's sometimes two point five xing. I think I saw her three x earlier as well. Maybe she's randomizing. Maybe she has a RNG. She's putting a lot of pressure on her on her opponent. So Stoyan Donk bets here half pot, and then Wenling raises. Stoyan calls. These two are not shy. She likes the half pot bet. I know. I mean, it's just like, yeah, a lot of a lot of half pot bets so far. Not seen it for value yet, though. Wow. Ah, these two are. These two are. This is interesting range because if you have like a set, do you want to give someone such a good price if they have like a straight draw? Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god. What's happening? We get a call too. Aces versus six, seven, seven six, six. The nuts. Five. We've got oh. a winner. Is so young. She just zips it in. Wow, look at that, look at that. Man, with the GG mess, I kind of feel like I won. Look at those numbers. That was numbers. a quick That was amazing. Wow. Wow. What just happened? It's still an epic run, and the rail was insane. Thanks again to DVW Stevie, Joe Ingram, and Patrick Leonard, and of course, Pedacto for hosting this rail stream. I hope you guys also had a lot of fun, enjoyed the rail and also have learned something now um, from the hands and then see you guys at the tables. Of course, if you do enjoy it, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like, to not miss out of any content in the future. And then see you guys next time.